Paul Selman with an encouraging word for you today from my devotional TGIF Today God is First. Today's message is entitled Wrestling with God out of Genesis thirty-two thirty-one. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel and he was limping because of his hip. Jacob was a man who was a controller. Os Hillman with an encouraging word for you today from my devotional TGIF Today God is First. Today's message is entitled His Father Isaac by Pretending to be Esau. This trick led Isaac to give the family blessing to Jacob, which meant Jacob would eventually inherit the land God had promised to Abraham's seed. Jacob also learned control from his uncle Laban, who caused Jacob to work for 14 years to take Rachel as his lifelong mate. One must ask, which was more ugly in God's sight, the self-centered nature and worldliness of Esau or the control and manipulation of Jacob. Control is a problem for men and women. Many women use sex to control their husbands. Many men use power and force to control their wives. Control is at the core of that which is opposite the cross, self-rule. What delivers us from this fleshly nature of control? A crisis. Jacob's crisis came when he was faced with the prospect of meeting a brother who said he would kill him the next time he saw him. Esau had built his own clan and was about to meet Jacob and his clan in the middle of the desert. Jacob was fearful, so he retreated. There he met a messenger from God who wrestled with him. Jacob clung to God and refused to let go of this angel. It is the place where Jacob was given a painful but necessary spiritual heart transplant. From that point on, Jacob would walk with a limp because God had to dislocate his hip in order to overcome Jacob's strong will. For workplace believers, God often has to dislocate our hip through failure and disappointments. Sometimes it is the only way he can get our attention. Our nature to control and manipulate is so strong that it takes a a catastrophic event to wake us up. Yet God did not reject Jacob for these character traits. In fact, God blessed him greatly because he saw something in Jacob that pleased him. He saw a humble and contrite heart beneath the cold and manipulative exterior of Jacob's life. And it was that trait that God needed to develop. He did this by bringing about the crisis in Jacob's life that led to total consecration. This event was marked by Jacob getting a new name, Israel. For the first time, Jacob had a nature change, not just a habit change. What will God have to do in your life to gain complete consecration to his will and purposes? Beware of the Christian leader who does not walk with a limp, said my good friend Bob Mumford. You know, in this story, we hear about two people, Jacob and Esau. Both of them had serious character flaws, and yet God used them greatly, and he used them both to build nations. And so that gives me hope and encouragement that he's not giving up on me, even in spite of my failures. So let's go to the Lord today and ask him to chip away those things that need to be chipped away so that we can be fully useful in his kingdom. Heavenly Father, we come to you today and we We submit our lives to you that you would chip away all those things, those character uh, deficiencies in our life so that we can be your man or woman uh, to fulfill the larger story of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day. And uh, if you have not gotten one of our booklets called Discovering Your Purpose, uh, you can do that by going to our devotional website, todaygodisfirst.com, and signing up for our email devotional, and you can get a free download of this booklet that will help you discover your own purpose. God bless.